FBI Director Christopher Wray shows up in front of Congress, and we've got a lot of questions for him about January 6th. In particular, Thomas Massey, who had previously sent a letter over to Christopher Wray asking him about that pipe bomber, the guy who was apparently going to blow up the RNC and the DNC that they never found, that the FBI was able to pinpoint the pimple on somebody's butt 5,000 miles away, isolate him in a remote location in the hills of some insurrectionist camp. They go find that guy. But the pipe bomber, they can't find. Ray Epps, not worthy of an investigation. And so we've got a lot of questions. Why is the FBI pursuing certain people and not other people? Massey sent a letter over to Christopher Ray at the FBI, and they haven't been able to respond. And he wants to know why that is. This is what the testimony sounded like. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for five minutes. I thank the chairman. Director Ray, in light of information provided to us about the FBI's investigation of the January 6th pipe bombs, in an interview with Assistant Director Stephen Duantuano, Chairman Jordan and I sent you a letter a month ago. Some of the information that we found in that interview was that phone data that could have helped to identify the pipe bomber was corrupted, was unusable. Data, bomber, uh, corrupted. He also wasn't sure who found or how the second bomb was found at the DNC. Huh. Do you know how the second bomb was found at the DNC? And when do you plan on answering our letter? Never. Well, as to the letter, I will work with the department to make sure we can figure out what information we can provide. As you know, this is a very active, ongoing investigation, and there are some restrictions on that, but we yes, will Yes, we can handle classified on. information, it's, and we fund your department, and so you need to provide that. that. Respectfully, it's not an issue of classification. It's an issue of commenting on ongoing criminal investigations, yeah. which is something that by longstanding department policy, we are restricted in doing. And in fact, and the last administration actually strengthened those policies partly That's because- That's not our policy though, and we fund you. So let's move on. I could do you know how the second pipe bomb- Do you, can you tell us how the second pipe bomb was found at the DNC? Get I, again, I'm not gonna get into that here. 900 I, days ago is when this happened. And you said you had total confidence we'd apprehend the subject. We've found video that looks Looks like somebody, a passerby, miraculously found this pipe bomb at the DNC and then notified the police. Miraculously, I say, because it was it specifically the same, the precise time to cause the maximum distraction yeah, from amazing. the events going on at the Capitol. Can Weird. you show this video Weird that phone we call. have, please? I'd like to know if the director has seen this. This is somebody with a mask on, wearing a hat. They're walking in front of the DNC, which is out of the view on the right-hand side. You'll see him come into view. He goes to one police car, he goes to another police car, he's holding a backpack, he's got a mask on, he's talking to the police. And within a minute, they start scrambling. You'll see the camera turn to the pipe bomb, the location of the pipe bomb. By the way, that's, a, I believe, the Metro police are now getting out of their car, and that's Vice President-elect's detail in the black SUV, I believe. Parked about 30 feet from the pipe bomb, eating lunch. Okay, now we go over to the location of the pipe bomb. The cameras are scrambling. It appears to me that that's not a coincidence, that the person with the backpack who walked by that bench and then went up to the police and the detail didn't do that accidentally. They had a purpose in mind and that what transpired after that was the result of information that person gave to them. If that person found the pipe bomb, would they be a suspect? Well, again, I don't want to speculate about specific individuals. I will tell you that we have done thousands of interviews, reviewed something like 40,000 video files, of which this is one, uh, assessed 500 something tips. Have you interviewed uh, that the person? Devices. We have conducted all logical investigative steps and interviewed all logical individuals at this mm -hmm. point. Then you need, it's 900 days. You need to tell us what you found because we're finding stuff you haven't released into the public. In, well, in my remaining minute, I, I want to turn to another issue. George Hill, former FBI supervisory intelligence analyst in the Boston field office, told us that the Bank of America, with no legal process, was gave to the FBI gun purchase records with no geographical boundaries for anybody that was a Bank of America customer. Sick. Is that true? Your privacy rights well, gone. What I do know is that a number of business community partners all the time, including financial institutions, share information with us about possible criminal activity. Yeah. My understanding is that that they did it on their own, just voluntarily. They did. Oh no, God, these might these people might have bought guns. They could be insurrectionists. I'm sure the FBI didn't pressure them in any way, shape, or form. I'm sure the same behavior, the pattern that we saw with what they did with Twitter and Facebook and Google, I'm sure they're not doing that to all of the other domains. They couldn't possibly be doing that to, let's say, the banks 
and other entities, maybe credit bureaus, other entities where they can weasel their way in to gobble up data to identify their enemies. It's fully lawful. In the did specific, you, did you in the ask specific for that information? Instance, in the specific instance that you're asking about, my understanding is that that information was shared with field offices for information only, but then recalled to avoid even the appearance of any kind of overreach. But my understanding is that that's a fully lawful process. Was there a warrant involved? A again, of course not. my understanding is that the institution in question shared information with us, as happens all the time. Yeah. Did you request the information? I can't speak to the specifics. Yeah, okay, well, amazing. we've got an email where it says the FBI did give the search queries to Bank of America, and the Bank of America responded to the FBI and yeah. gave over this information without a search warrant. Do you believe there's any limitation on your ability to obtain gun purchase data or purchase Whatever they information for people that for people who aren't suspects from banks well, without a warrant? Now you're asking a legal question, which I would prefer to defer to the lawyers, since I'm not practicing as one right now, derp, including derp, derp. the department. But oh, what so I will dumb. tell you is that my understanding is that the process by which we receive information from business community partners across a wide variety of industries, including financial institutions, sharing information with us about possible criminal activity is something that is fully lawful under current federal law. Yeah, it, it is lawful because they're not demanding it. They're just saying, hey, insurrection and misinformation, and you certainly don't want us to come and knock you guys in the teeth with our regulation, do you? And we know that Mark Zuckerberg even told this story on Joe Rogan's show. He said that he was felt like they were under pressure. So they all buckle and they all comply. And these guys, very sneaky, they'll sit here and say, no, 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 we haven't violated anybody's rights. Why? Because they gave it to us. We were just sitting here and then they have this delivery of gun records from Bank of America. That's not what's happening. They are twisting arms. They're making it happen. Jim Jordan followed up on this one on the bank records. Here's what he says. Did the FBI ask financial institutions to turn over their customers' debit and credit card purchase history in the Washington, D.C. area for January 5th and 6th, 2021? I don't know the answer to that as I sit here right now. Well, we do, because Bank of America gave us this email from the FBI to Bank of America. Oh! Well, I am aware that Bank of America provided information to the FBI, but what communications occurred between the FBI and Bank of America about it? Let's read it. Are Perfect. You this is from at FBI.gov to bankofamerica.com. Upcoming SAR product idea. To recap our morning call, we, the FBI, are prepared to action immediately the following thresholds. CTD, SPES, SEU is interested in all financial relationships that meet the following thresholds. Email coming from the FBI, we're interested in all of the following transactions. Customers confirmed as transacting either through bank accounts, debit cards, or credit cards in Washington, D.C. purchases between 1-5 and 1-6, 2021. Your disgusting FBI demanding that Bank of America, to recap our morning call, we are prepared to action the following thresholds. Any purchase history going back six months generally for weapons or weapons-related vendor purchases, right? FBI to Bank of America. Now, I have a lot of sympathy for Bank of America. When you have the government breathing down your neck, it's very hard to say no to them. And we've gone through this. We saw what happened with Twitter. FBI saying, basically, you're in big trouble, right? We had Adam Schiff in his office threatening these people and waging war, essentially, unless they did what they did. And how can you not, when it's the federal government breathing down your neck, what are you supposed to say? This is something that I would like to know. Who approved this? Who approves data collection and does it work its way up to Christopher Ray? And if not, that means that there are people that are approving constitutional violations in Christopher Ray's agency and he's not aware of it? He purchases between 1521 1621. That's scary enough. But then the next bullet point's even more scary. Any historical purchase of a firearm. You guys asked Financial, it's the least Bank of America. We think more. Did you guys ask him? Again, I don't have the full sequence of the back and forth. You've got one, looks like you've got one email that I haven't seen before here. So I don't know that I have the full exchange that this Well, is does this email trouble of... you as much as it does members of the Judiciary Committee? That the FBI is asking for every single, I mean, we had members of Congress here that week first time they're getting sworn in as a new member of Congress, their family in town, and you're sweeping, and they may happen to be a customer of Bank of America, and you're sweeping up every debit and credit card purchase of their family who are in town that week because their husband or their dad or their mom is getting sworn in as a new member of Congress. And then you're also saying, overlaying that information with, did you, did this person buy a firearm? Without any, any warrants? Or I'm just nervous about that. Are you nervous about that? 
As I think I've testified no. before, my understanding is that our engagement with Bank of America was fully lawful, but that we recalled the leads that were cut to field well, If it's offices. lawful, that's, that was my next point. If it's yeah. lawful, why did you say we're not going to use these leads? That's what Mr. Jensen testified to when we deposed him. The director of the terrorism Didn't unit so at, good at the FBI. Yeah, that's to what he testified it, huh? to. Why did you Why did you not use the leads if it was lawful to get the information? Well, there are Chairman, plenty. It's one minute and eighteen seconds over time. There are hey, pipe sir, down. There are Is plenty of times where there are things that we lawfully can do, but that we decide is better that we not do, and yeah. I think that's what the happened. The idea there. that Mr. Massey said earlier that, I, that this is lawful that you like when it's investigating the Bidens. Yeah, we could do that, but well, we're not going to do that. No way. We're just going to let that one slide. So, all right, that's Christopher Ray on the banking records. Not much answers there, but you can see just another gross violation of your privacy rights in this case. You've got your free speech rights. You've got your privacy rights and the government doesn't care about either one of them. Both of these violations emanating from the disgusting FBI through Christopher Ray and the FBI director there. All right, this is Andy Biggs. Andy Biggs is also asking about January 6th. Here is Mr. Biggs from Arizona. Things here, and, and I, please don't, don't distract here because we're focusing on the, those who were there in an undercover capacity on January 6th. How many were there? Undercover agents. Uh, again, I, I'm not sure that I can give you that number as I sit here. I'm not sure there were undercover agents uh, on scene. I find that kind of a remarkable statement, Director. At this point, you don't know whether there were un undercover federal agents, FBI agents in the crowd or in the Capitol on January 6th. I say that because I want to be very careful. There have been a number of court filings related to some of these topics, and I want to make sure that I stick with him what's in I, I understand. We have covered that here, and even in the Proud Boys trial, which we covered at length, the government, the prosecutors even agreed that there were eight confidential human sources that were involved in the situation. We also know that the defense attorneys for the Proud Boys alleged that there were 50-plus CHSs that they had identified, but the government kept many of that, much of that evidence out because they said that those were agents from a different agency, in this case, Homeland Security. So they said it's not relevant. This is an FBI prosecution. We don't need those agents. They're irrelevant. And they kept it all out. But the government, by stipulation, admitted that there were CHSs. Now, at the start of this exchange, we saw that Andy Biggs actually asked him about undercover agents. And he's still going to say that there were no undercover FBI agents there. But now he's waffling back on that a little bit. Now he's saying, I can't really tell you because there are different court filings and I don't really know what we're admitting. I thought I heard you say you didn't know whether there were FBI agents or informants or human sources in the Capitol or in the vic in vicinity on January 6th. Did I misunderstand you? I thought that's what you said. I, well, I referred very specifically to undercover agents. Yeah. And so are you acknowledging then there were undercover agents? As I sit here right now, I do not believe there were undercover agents. Undercover agents on scene. So he's going to say that those were not specific FBI agents. So they might have been Homeland Security agents or Capitol Hill agents, or they could have been CHSs who were there. But apparently no undercover FBI agents, according to him, which will be very, very interesting because Congress is going to want to dig into that. I'm not sure anybody believes that, including Representative Daryl Issa. How many individuals were either FBI employees or people that the FBI had made contact with were in the January 6th entry of the Capitol and surrounding area? Broaden the so question. I really need to be careful here talking about uh, where we have or have not used confidential human sources. Was there one January or more? Was there or one or more individuals that would fit that description on January sixth that were in or around? Absolutely, the yes. I, I believe there is a, a filing in one of the January six cases Proud that Boys. can provide a little more information about this, and I'm happy to see if we can follow back up with you. I, I just, Proud Boys, they admitted to eight of them. I just want yeah. an answer, was there one or more? I mean, you would know if there was at least one individual who worked for the FBI who, who entered the Capitol on that day. I can't, again, I just can't speak to that here, but I'm happy to get the court filing. Look, that, look it's that been two years, and you're now come before us. The gentleman asks these questions, makes all kinds of insinuations, 
And you, you nod your head yes, and then I ask you simply, was there one or more? And you won't answer that. So I'm going to make the assumption that there was more than one, a more lot than more. five, more than 10, and that you're ducking uh, a the, lot the more question than that. because you don't want plus. to answer for the fact that you had at least one and somehow missed understanding that some of the individuals were very dangerous and that there were others inciting individuals to enter the Capitol after others broke windows. So and they either were one of two things. They were incompetent and in that they couldn't predict this was gonna happen even though there was actual planning that was involved with these various protests. They were so incompetent that they couldn't prepare and defend the capital of the country, which is just laughable. Or they just kinda of let the whole thing happen. It wasn't a big deal. Or maybe they were actively involved in it. Now, I think you know where we lie here. But the FBI put this on Twitter, very outraged that we would even insinuate that these people are corrupt. They said, you know, in response to a question from the House Judiciary Committee about calls to dismantle and defund the FBI, which is a great idea, Director Ray contended that such a move would harm national security, the people, and the communities that the Bureau works to protect and serve every day. They say it would hurt our great state and local enforcement partners who depend on us every day. It would hurt the Americans across our communities, the people we're protecting from cartels, violent criminals, gang members, predators, and domestic terror and cyber attacks, and I could go on. That's something that Christopher Ray said. And that they are needed in order to protect all of us, which I doubt. I think you could easily just defund the FBI, roll in all of the different field offices into the local states, delegate that all the team there at those agencies. They're now under the jurisdiction of the state and the states can handle their own security. You make a, a much smaller national force that focuses on the foreign affair attacks and all that other stuff the FBI is supposed to actually do and the rest of it goes away. Now here is the clip. After this, they said, before the House Judiciary Committee, FBI Director Ray asserted that any accusation that the Bureau was involved in orchestrating the violence on January 6 is a disservice to the efforts of the FBI's brave and hardworking workforce. Mm -hmm. Disservice to our brave, hardworking, and dedicated men and women. Well, they could just give us more information about this, and we could know. We could say, well, all right, you've identified all of your CHSs, you've identified all of your undercover agents, whether they're FBI or HSI or wherever they're from, and then we could come to our own conclusions. But we're allowed to ask questions, and until they are open and transparent about it, until they stop stonewalling Congress and denying stuff that we can see on our faces is accurate, then nobody's gonna continue to trust them. We know it's a giant cover-up. Where's the pipe bomber? Why were they gobbling up bank records? Why are they abusing FISA for January 6th? Why wasn't the Capitol secured in the first place? We know why.